Hello, hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today we're going to work on this last piece, last piece, <laughs> for the Poe Journals. Uh, it was a, a paper um, in that Halloween Super Simple by Peak Monarch Prints. And I think this was her base for her piece that she was making. Well, the spiders, you know, I've used elsewhere in the a journal. But I'm going to show you the idea that that, uh, I think it was white rabbit journals had came up for this it's really unique and i like the way she did it so these came with a little flap which they were supposed to be a flip out i think but i've cut the flaps off of these when i cut them out so we've got two spare or scrap pieces of paper here and i'm making it for to be a gusset so it doesn't have to be a neat line through the middle, but score, score you a line through the center. And we're going to put that on each side for a gusset. I have a little string of ivy here. I have like the Edgar Allan Poe that was out of the the one kit, um, the actual kit for the, the journal. And then all of these came from Tracy Fox's, um, it was uh, Gothic in the Belfry, I think it was. Yes. And... Anyhow, she had all of these great uh, titles for his stories and short stories and poems and stuff over time. So we may use that around the outside somehow. We'll see. We'll see what we got room for. So anyhow, let's get to it. This shouldn't take too long. I've got a scrap piece of uh, coffee, tea dyed paper, whatever it was. I usually mix. <laughs> and we got to figure out which one we want to be our front top piece. Because that's the piece that will be framed. It's going to have a square cut out of it. And it's probably going to be that one with all the writing on it. So this under piece will be the piece that um, you can pull in and out. And how did... It was it was opposite. So I think it's this way. Um, so this piece will definitely have the gussets. Let's go ahead and do the gussets. And get them over with. Because we know those... They don't have to be squared off or anything as close to being, you know, scored in the middle as possible. <laughs> That's all you need. I've been having a little trouble with my glue bottle. It doesn't squirt out like uh, <laughs> yeah, it should. So all you have to do is line it up. I've got them a little longer than I need them. So I'll just put the glue down there. And we're going to put this on the back side of here. It doesn't have to be all the way up, just, and then just on the inside of the edge. And then we're going to rub them down. I probably got a little bit of seepage. I figured I did. <laughs> never, never fail. So you want it just on the edge or as close as possible. And more than likely, the other piece will have to be cut down just a tad, just for this uh, for that piece to be able to, to move through the groove. <laughs> move to the groove. Yeah. All right. So we're going to put that one here. Uh, just about right there, I think it is. Scooch it as close as possible to the edge that you can. And it didn't matter which side you went up with on this one. As you can see, it's not going to be shown. You might see a tiny tip edge of it, and that's about it. All right, and then you're going to just take and cut off your excess as straight across as you can. There we go. Of course, I have a little bit sticking out. There. And this one. Now, the ones that are on the paper have like a kind of a diagonal or kind of a cut like this. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And see if that'll help out any. Sometimes it makes your um, card, tag, whatever's going into it, flow into it easier. So that is probably the reason that they do that all the time. Okay. So we might be able to see the... No, I doubt, I doubt if we can, but I'll do it anyway for Phyllis. <laughs> okay. So... That is our front, but it's also going to be our piece that has a cutout. So we need to get on here 
and I have some square cutouts, which may be what I need to use. So let me pull those out real quick. So here are my my square cutouts. Uh, there's ten of them. They're the Fun Stampers Journey. That's one of the things I started out with <laughs> when I got into doing anything. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is pull this out and pick one. Now one is a cut cutting edge and one is a stipple. Is that what they call that? A stipple. It'll give it an impression around the outside edge. I don't know if it's going to be that one or the, the big one. Shoot, not the big one. That's all the way out. We want to have a little bit of... You, you don't want to go so far out that you're going to, you know, mess with the integrity of the the strength of your piece. <laughs> I guess I'm trying to think of that. Yes. Um, so we're going to just put a little bit of this down. And I'm going to try try to sort of center it. I mean, you see I've got about the same at the top and the bottom. So that's what we'll go with. Now, I don't think I want to do anything with the stipply edge. Though, you know, it might not be too bad. We could do that on the outside edge. Let's get that back up a little bit. Just so you can see what I'm talking about. It's kind of interesting. I mean, I... I didn't realize, I thought these were like nesting dies where they're, each one of them was the same exact thing. But it turned out it wasn't. <laughs> so, let's see. I need to move this up just a tad. I'm trying to hold the one down and get the other one on here in the right spot. It's not very easy. I should have just left the one, left the one um, taped and put the other one over it. It's not like I really need to save this. All right, I think that's good. We'll just put one at the bottom just for safety precautions. Because I may flip through twice, you know. I like to do that quite often. Okay, I'm running it to, through my die cutter, and I'll be right back. All right, let's see if we can take it apart now. Got a little piece here. A little piece up here. Come on, baby. There we go. And then we'll take our two pieces off. Now we got a little bonus piece here that could be a journal card. You just got to put something on the back if you want to keep that white from showing. Uh, there's the cut piece. And then here is the piece. And I think it went into the actual... Oh, it did. Look at that. <laughs> so I was cutting through that in some cases, but that's okay. It cut through it. These little thin dies can cut through... You know, some basic cardstock, which I think is what this was. All right, so you have a little bit of a dot. Now, if it wasn't anything behind it, like this edge, well, you can still see through it. But you can kind of see it's got a little bit of a cute idea there. So let me put this away and get this out of the way. And then we'll get to our next step, which is... Oh, I got to cut this one down, don't I? Because I need to fold this back up. And then you're going to lay this one against it. And see, it's got just a little bit on each side that I need to trim off. So let me get the cutter. All right, here's my tonic cutter that Miss Paper Crafting with Miss Tommy gave me. She's such a good soul. She's been working so hard lately. I really hope you're doing well, Tommy. I know you're trying to save up some money and you're doing such a good job, but they made you the boss of everyone. It's because you got a responsibility in your blood, girl. All right, so I'm going to kind of, oh, I'm off the screen. I'm going to kind of play and come down in the angle hoping that this is where I need it to be because otherwise I don't need to be worrying about this right yet. I think I cut enough off though. All right, let's pull that aside and let's just nestle it in here. Oh yeah, I've got plenty of room, plenty of room to spare. Okay, then all you got to do is go back in. I'll probably want to 
cut the edges, just a soft cut, to round them so it slides in easier. I've always found that you cut the corners, a tag or anything else will slide in much easier. I mean, if you don't have a, a rounder or a, a corner cutter or anything like that, you can just do a snip on the end, like a little, just cut the triangle off, you know, boom, like that with the scissors, like, chunk. <laughs> I see a lot of people do that. So you don't need all the necessary things that you see crafters use. You don't, you don't need that. Oh, I need to actually ink, that's my scorched timber, in here because I cut that. So I need to to ink that white out of there. Now with the other spouncers, I can get into these little corners really easy, but I've seen with this round one, it's not as easy. <laughs> so, you know, it depends. You know, you do sometimes need both, depending on what you want to use it for. Okay, let me see if I can. Sometimes you get in here and rub back, you don't get anything more on that the outside that you want. All right, so, wink, wink. Okay, I think we got it. We got it. Now, what we want to do is we're wanting to put something on the back of here because this is a journal card. This will be written on. So this is going to be this way, that will be that way, sliding up into it. And um, what we want to do is use this. Now that we've cut it down, it's the perfect size. Look at that. But you're going to want to maybe emulate the shape of the top, which is such a unique little look. Where my pencil go? So what you might want to do is take your pencil and trace that around here. Now you can trace the whole thing if you'd like. And then, if need be, you can always trim it down. Or you can go for the whole size if you wanted to do that so let's see what we got now oh i got a cut there but that's okay once you glue it together you'll never see it <laughs> and you know using up your scraps is always a sign <laughs> for celebration <laughs> it's always good to use them babies up so they don't pile up and breed like rabbits okay <laughs> i was trying to see if there was any stories i could tell you today I was kind of looking now there's there's been one I've been I've told you before but it's like a a thing where grandma when she got the house over in Swope that was like the last place she lived at that's where my dad you know he he grew up to manhood he he went into the the army and then he um he met mom and they lived there for a little bit after they married and then you know it was it was a place that everybody would come on Sundays. That was the big day. Everybody would come out to grandma's. Well, most times, most times they would come to grandma's. There were some occasions when they'd go to somebody else's house for a while, I guess just to give her some, you know, relief. But, oh, she loved, she loved when the family came around. Oh, she would, she would have chickens. Now, they had chickens everywhere <laughs> that they lived at and um the thing was that and i'm gonna put i'm gonna do this and see how this works i gotta get me a background paper here let me just use this some plastic i've been putting my covers together with all this excess wrapper plastic that i got so we'll use that for here but yes she would always have chickens and I was reading where my Uncle Fred said he had packed those chickens up and moved them so many times that they just kind of, when they saw him coming, they would cross their legs and just sit there and wait for him to haul them off. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, she would always buy a bunch of chickens and raise them up and feed them all kinds of good stuff and let them free range, you know, out in the yard. And it was... Um, it was where she could just go out and get her a chicken or two. And uh, she she did it the old-fashioned way now. She would take and she would catch that chicken, cut its head off. Then she would um, t 
take in, um, how was it she did it? She singed off the feathers by rolling up a newspaper. And um, I don't know if I got this thing on here right, but oh, I don't think I did. Uh, yeah, but she would singe off their feathers by rolling up a newspaper and holding it up. And uh, Dad said he didn't know how she didn't singe every hair off her arm that she had, but she didn't. <laughs> And that's what she would do. She would just oh, take care of those feathers. And then she'd pluck the pin feathers out and that kind of thing and get them all prepped up. I mean, she was the old hand at doing that because when they lived down at, out at McClung, way out in the mountains, you know, uh, before they moved down into the town, she used to dress a chicken and take it in and have it uh, uh, put on her account and then she would get her staples with it. It was like in trade. She didn't have to deal with any money. She didn't have any money. But she knew how to barter. <laughs> so, you know, she would do that. And them old rich people, you know, they would come in. And uh, they would take that chicken. And they didn't have to do anything to it. Just put it in the oven, basically, with some seasonings. But, yeah, she would do that all the time. Anyhow, she had she had her uh, gimmick down pat on how to fix some chickens, <laughs> and that's what she would do. And then she would usually fry them, fried chicken. Everybody loved her fried chicken, and everybody else would bring a dish. I mean, she only I I said you had fifty people at that house, and she only fixed two chickens. I said, how was that? <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, multiplication doesn't add up for me. <laughs> and he goes, well, everybody else would bring something, too. I mean, you know, sometimes the others may have done chicken. But it was like a, a community effort. So I said, okay, that makes better sense. And there was so much more to eat. I mean, they may have brought a whole bunch of other stuff that, you know, was a meat product that others would have ate kids wouldn't have ate the chicken that kind of thing but oh my goodness that sounded like the days they would all be together having fun you know visiting i guess sometimes they may have had out of town uh family maybe from over in west virginia no her sis one of her sisters and her um, brother had moved over. So they were around. And, and then a half-brother, he was there uh, in places. I mean, he moved around a lot. But sometimes he was there. And anyhow. Okay, so I think I've messed up this piece enough. It's curled up because it's been glued with a... A glue stick so that always adds the curl to it but you can put it under something if you think it's going to curl you can try to roll out the curl by doing this way reversing it that's one of the easiest ways to do it <laughs> like that all right so this is an upside down piece we're going to have our guy on it but we need him to be trimmed down just a wee bit as you see, I would like to have sort of a, a frame around him. So let's get on here and see if we can trim him down just a bit. Maybe a quarter on each side. Like that. I'll leave the bottom because he's... He looks like Napoleon. I don't... <laughs> you know, he, he may have been in the age of Napoleon. Or maybe... No, he wasn't. Uh, he was in the 1700s, 1800s, 1800s. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was a look everybody was having going on at one time to look like Napoleon. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Okay, let's go ahead and get our picture on here and try to get it as centered as possible. Uh, yeah, but by by that time, there was 
you know, you had a few people come over here and then boom, all the Markhams in this area are my family. Nobody else spells it like us. Now, when I was having to take Dad down to the emergency room, there was this lady guard that was there. You'd always have to give your name, and they gave you like a pass uh, to get in and out of the rooms and stuff. Well, she spelled it, or her husband spelled it, uh, M-A-R-K-H-A-M. And I said, oh, that's some of those mid- mid or a little bit northern virginia markhams weren't they <laughs> she goes yeah that's them you must spell it the other way i said yeah yeah ours come over from west virginia <laughs> on the other side of west virginia all right this piece at the bottom let's see how's that going to be this piece at the bottom is going to be sticking out it's going to be just about like that so you have this cool top and a bottom to it and then, I don't know how much of him is showing correctly. Oop, maybe not. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, <laughs> he's peeking out. Let's see, maybe right there. Uh, yeah. This is for mine, by the way. <laughs> so, if you're doing it for yours, pay attention to where the uh, square is. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. He's up there peeking at you. But it will, it should have been where he's looking out like that. But it was just so tall. All right, we're not going to cry about it. We're going to go ahead and keep going here. I'm going to take the Edgar Allan Poe part here. And I'm going to see about putting that down here on this little bottom area. That will probably stick out. And I'm going to go ahead and see if it'll all fit and I'm going to ink around the outsides I don't know if I really need to but I'm doing it <clears throat> and I don't know if I'd mentioned before that dad had been telling me this recipe now my my sister's ex-husband loved it he called it soul food <laughs> but dad would make him I see I don't think I'm going to get the whole thing in there. Well, unless I put it up here on here. So maybe I can just start it right there and go upward. So my my ex-brother-in-law, he called it soul food. And it was where dad was making, he would make the the spare ribs or, or, or pork. And uh, he would cook it. And um, then he would add let's see sauerkraut and then he would add dumplings and i was just reading i was looking through my notes over there because i got a bunch of stories written down that i hadn't put in my, my main story yet but it he he said that that was the west virginia way to fix it and uh they all loved anything with a sour taste i guess to give you something different um some flavorings you know so what happened was he told it to me about down there one day and I I didn't write it down of course I didn't have anything to write on and then I came home and I forgot all about it and then all of this happened you know with him and then we lost him and I thought oh god I didn't write it down and I was sitting there trying to pull it out of my memory which isn't the greatest thing anymore you know and I kind of googled <laughs> I google a lot of stuff um, I kind of like this lime water thing, but I don't, I, I don't think it goes. So we're going to use that for something else. Okay. Now I'll pull these out. But yeah, he, um, he told it to me and I, I, I wish to goodness that I'd done something with it. So I Googled it and I did find a recipe that sounded so like what he was telling me. The only thing was it had an onion in it. Which can hurt, and putting an onion in something only adds flavor, you know. So, I uh, I wrote that down, and I used it because it was very, very close to his. Very close. And from what I can recall, you know. So, that was, that was cool. I got that recipe. Yeah. He, had, he has a big... Um, 
recipe book down there that he got when he was in the service. <clears throat> and he didn't see active service. He was in like the reserves, I guess, because of when he was born. And um, anyhow, so he, um, he has this book and it will serve a hundred. <laughs> A hundred. <laughs> so I guess that's the people in the mess hall, you know. Now, I did tell my brother, I said, of anything that's dad's, the one thing that I would like to have is his recipe book. And as yet, we haven't figured out where it is. <laughs> He's got a desk. He put a lot of stuff in. So we're, we're thinking it may be in there. So, but yeah. Uh, I loved now one of the the things that everybody remembers from dad is we always had we'd have a reunion and sometimes it was at dad's after his brothers got older or passed away and couldn't have it anymore or just to give somebody else you know that year off <laughs> so he was um let's see I wonder if I can get two maybe I can get two down here um, so he was, uh, doing his chicken and it, it's, it's a recipe that's in the book, but it's also a, um, it was for a hundred people. So he had to bring it down to where you could make it f like in half, or there was another option where you could just make a quart jar version of it and you could just do your own chicken at home one chicken <laughs> and uh, get away with using the recipe on that but everybody loved that chicken that's the one thing they remember out of anything because they were leaving you know comments on his uh, funeral home a bit thing and yeah they they all remember that now Maybe I'll put that up there. I'm thinking about putting some on the side, but I'm going to be covering up that little... Well, that's right. I got that vine to go up the side, so maybe not. So we'll just put this up here. The purloined letter, whatever. I haven't read that one. I've read a few of his, but not all of them. The Black Cat, of course. And, and the most of these I have not read. I have read The Telltale Hearts. And the Pit and the Pendulum, I watched with, um, oh, what was his name? I said it the other week, and now I can't remember it. Um, Vincent Price, mm, the man, Vincent Price, yes. Okay, so we're going to find our page that we want to put this in, in our journal. And I think I have it right here, and I still have my page marked with that and I'll pull that out now I'm going to put this down and glue it I believe I'm going to cut this down I don't want to see it and you don't need but maybe a quarter of an inch as long as it's not showing you're good now that see the other side's fine this one just kind of went haywire so let's go ahead and glue this down and I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to glue the top. It's it's not needed because, but I, I wouldn't mind the option of putting something in the top. Let me put it down first and I'll look at it and, and see. We're going to put it about up to here. Oh, look, you can see that ship behind there. I was going to say I want to put something behind it. Uh, that's spooky or something, but I think that'll work perfectly. <laughs> it looks like something out of an old haunted house, you know. Like they had a sea captain <laughs> for for um, an ancestor. Okay. That works for me. Now, this part will go in like that and tuck right in. There we go. Now, you don't have to push it all the way up. I've got plenty of room. And I can cap this now, too, can I? Oh, I, I still have my vine. 
Okay, so what I thought to do with this vine was to put it going up the side, either this side or that side. I, I think I'll do the inside because I may put me some um, lace a ribbon something on that side. Okay, so let's do this. I sure hope everybody's been doing well lately. Uh, I guess this one will show probably Sunday. This is Saturday, isn't it? Yeah. This will probably show Sunday. And um, I'll have maybe one or two, hopefully two, <laughs> for over my vacation while I'm gone. I'll be back next Monday, so it's not going to be a long one. Mom has her appointments both Mondays, so I got to be here to get her to them. And, uh, ooh, I think that'll work just fine. It gives it a little bit of something. It gives you some glitter, too, with that mica spray. There were so many pieces to this. I had so many ideas I wanted to do and so many inspirations that I saw. And then Tracy Fox came out with that new kit or a kit that was, you know, Halloween kind of inspired and it was perfect for this because it had posts up in it <laughs> and I had to add those parts and pieces and they fit in just perfect I needed tags anyhow and it, it's just everything kind of went uh, perfectly everything kind of blended in all together for me and worked just right okay well this is what we've got today everybody I don't know what to call it. Um, a pocket slide. Maybe that's it. A window pocket slide. I think that's what we're going to go with. So, everybody, you all have a great, great day. Thank you to all my subscribers and viewers. I'm stumbling over my words. <laughs> but you all have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. I'll be having all kinds of stories for you when I get back. So, stay tuned for all those. Oh, all right. Bye.